Hello and welcome to CNCF Minutes. In this video, I'll be walking you through a very interesting project, KNAD. This video is brought to you by Suborbital, Armo, Cloudcasa, Robusta, Sysdig, Slim AI, and Teleport. So let's get started. So KNAD is a CNCF incubating project. It recently became part of uh, the CNCS incubating status, and uh, it is an enterprise solution for building serverless and event-driven application. So there are two portions to it. One is KNAD serving, and one is KNAD event which we'll discuss in today's uh, video. If you have a container image, so if you have a container image, then Knative can do all the heavy lifting for you. Now, what do I mean by that heavy lifting is all the features that it provides out of the box. So you can scale to zero. So the pods of your applications, which will be running on Kubernetes, will be scaled to zero. I mean, Knative gives you that capability. So which leads to efficient resource utilization. Uh, so you actually get code to URL in a few minutes without writing any deployment files, without writing any ingress rules and without taking care of the certificates, etc. So all the heavy lifting is done by Knative. And it can also respond to events, which are like the cloud native events. It can emit those events and there can be a publisher subscriber way in which you can have the eventing, you can take advantage of the event, Knative eventing as well. So if you want to deploy an application to Kubernetes, obviously you need to have, you need to write the code. That is the first part. Then you need to write the deployment file. Then you need to write the service file. Then you need to write the ingress for that. Then you need to write the certs for that. Then you, then you actually need to map all those stuff like the labels and the selectors. So as a developer, I do not need to actually learn all those things. I just want my code to be deployed to a URL. And I want to use the resources efficiently. Like I want to auto scale automatically, scale to zero automatically based on uh, the loads, which are there based on the number of requests. So Knative does that. So this is where Knative sits in. So you have the infra layer on top of that, you have Kubernetes. On top of that, the Knative layer will be sitting. Now Knative will be providing you many features like uh, auto scaling, scaling to zero routing intelligent routing traffic splitting uh, between those you can have different tags for different routes which can be their revisions that that will be a very efficient use case and out of the box certificate management so you will be having your code and the functions so you just have the code and you have containerized that actually knative uh, previously uh, sometime back the build was also a part of knative but it was then uh, eventually move to Tekton pipeline. So you can use any build tool uh, like Canico, uh, Buildia or Docker to build the images. Once you have that containerized image, Knative is really, really powerful. So there are two parts to it. Uh, like I told you, one is the eventing and one is the serving. Uh, so this is the serving part where you will be writing a service. And when you write the service, it automatically creates the revision and the route for you. And you can also do the traffic splitting over here. And uh, one part is eventing, which is like the cloud events, which are the sources, which will be taking the events. And then it will be sending those events to the broker and then to the triggers, which will route to a specific service or the sync. We'll be discussing all those concepts. And that trigger can also send to a service, Knative service itself. So Knative serving and eventing can be a powerful combination, but they absolutely can be run independently. So when you install, the serving layer on top of Kubernetes, you'll be first applying the CRDs, then you'll be installing the serving core, then you will be needing a networking layer. So Knative uh, not only works with Istio, but it also works with Courier and Contour. So you will be having that. Then you'll be patching the Knative serving to use a particular networking layer. In this particular example that I'll be showing you in the end, we'll be using Courier. So you'll be having all these components. Then uh, on top of that, you can have the DNS, uh, the auto DNS, uh, which can be there. And you can actually do the manual DNS as well. But uh, you can, there's a provision in the quick starts and stuff like that if you want to test quickly out. So it will be giving you proper DNS names with the certificates like TLS and, uh, TLS and HTTP 01, or you can use a cert manager as well. So there are different ways you can get the auto TLS as well. Like just like you just have the container you deploy that, giving some of the specification in the service. And after that, everything gets created automatically for you. And you'll be getting the HTTPS endpoint, which is super fancy. So how internally it works. Whenever you will be creating a service, it creates a uh, and, and you hit a particular URL. So uh, let's say you deployed a service. 
and you hit it for the first time now when you hit for the first time then it goes the request goes to the activator now the activator will ask the auto scaler to scale up one pod to serve that request so that is the default first time flow so that is a default first time flow and the auto scaler used over here is the kpa which is the default one you can also define a service to use auto scaler a different auto scaler which can be hpa as well hpa can do like a cpu based utilization uh, metrics calculation which uh, the k native kpa cannot do and stuff like that so based on the requirement you can do that and also for the uh, config auto scaler like what if the request like you have the front end application and you want it always to be running and for the other applications you want need to need basis you can scale down to zero so you can actually define those uh, things as well so you can uh, define the scale down rate uh, the maximum scale up rate uh, so that you always have one replica of the pod running if you want or if you do not want the replica of the pod running you want it to actually scale down to zero so you, all these configurations can be done here now on the pod side how it how things happen is uh, once the this flow is over so now whenever you are hitting uh, the service what happens is there is a queue container inside the pod now one is the user container which is your application one is the queue container and if you have like istio and stuff like that you will be having another container like envoy so the queue container will be taking the metrics and will be keeping the eye on the concurrency concurrency is this thing by default it is 100 so it will be keeping an eye on the concurrency as soon as the concurrency is greater uh, then it requests the hpa or the kpa the auto scaler so auto scaler will be taking will be watching that matrix and if it is greater than the concurrency it will spin up a new pod for that uh, again the configuration can be seen over here and for a, for a service, you can create different revisions and you can also do uh, traffic splitting, like 50% of the traffic, traffic goes to service A, 50% of the traffic goes to uh, service B, and you can also gradually roll out. So that's how in, in short summary, Knative works, Knative serving works. Some of the other advanced uh, stuff is like easy rollbacks. So if you want to like roll back to a previous revision, so it's simple like Knative service update, the service name, and you do the traffic to a previous revision and give it the 100% traffic over there. Uh, tags, you can tag a revision to directly hit a particular revision. So like uh, XYZ dot the default name of the service. So you can give those tags to the revision as well. And there can be a default revision as well. Uh, rollout, so you can do the gradual rollout to the new revision as well. So can you can set the rollout duration to gradually roll out but the good practice is to have a cd solution in place for production like setups where you can check the slos and stuff like that so like for example captain the next part is eventing now eventing is basically for the event driven architectures so it's knative when knative was kind of built uh, for the eventing stuff so it was very carefully taken how to decouple stuff so there is a lot of decoupling, like independent producer consumers can be created. Everything is based on cloud events, which is another CNCF project that is for the standard event formatting. So different components that form up that Knative eventing is the source. So the source is the one that gets the event inside the cluster, like it ingresses all the event inside of the cluster and it is the primary event producers. So they'll be like inside of the cluster, they'll be generating the events. Now those events will be, those are actually the cloud events that they'll be emitting. Now this will be sent to the broker. Uh, now there are two types over here, two types of routing, two types of routing techniques. One is the broker trigger technique and another one is the channel subscription technique. Both are used for routing. So like routing to a destination can be a function, can be a service uh, to the sync. Uh, so uniformly distribute uh, traffic to the consumers and consumers can directly register for a specific event. Now what happens for this filtering of a uh, trigger? So whenever you want to filter the triggers for a particular event, then it makes sense to use brokers and trigger approach. So whenever you talk about channel subscription, they are topology based event routing. So for example, it transforms the event and then routes to the uh, process. I'll give you an example in the end, which Ahmed gave in the deep dive tutorial. I'll put the link in the description for that. The last portion would be the sync. So sync can uh, sync is taking the events. So can be services, channels, broker. So sync can be directly calling the services. Sync can be directly uh, going to the channel or the broker. So this is how the sync uh, will be sending the events to. So what the use case? So let's say there is a, a GitHub repository and you have a GitHub source. You want 
on a PR to send an email to you. So that's that's the kind of use case. So for that, you will be having a source and a sync. Source and sync are clear, like the source will be the GitHub source. Now, whenever you create that source, there will be a controller. So there is a controller uh, for every source. And uh, whenever you create that, there will be adapter. Now, adapter is the uh, is the one who will be interacting with GitHub, uh, connect to GitHub via webhook, and will be tracking all the events and sending the cloud events to the sync. Now, uh, we'll be like sending from the GitHub source to a URI. Now that URI, we should be sending uh, either to a channel or to a broker. So channel and broker are also the uh, KNAD objects. Uh, for example, like uh, the channel can be uh, in memory or Kafka. You can define multiple channels for multiple environments for development production. Uh, and you can have different services. Like they, let's say they both, both these services need the event. So they'll be subscribing to uh, that particular channel and then sending uh, that to the sync and sync will be sending it to the email. So you'll be having like uh, both of these have subscribed to the channel. Now the channel will be sending events to uh, both of them, the same event. Now, if you want to filter the events, like it wants service one wants all the events, but service two wants only a specific events filtered out from service one, then you can use a broker and trigger technique. So that's where like it will be different where you want filtering on the services that want the events. So that's how your eventing would work on a very high level. So let's uh, understand this from a demo perspective, how this will work, what actually you have to create after installing Knative. So for the demo purpose, I have already installed Knative eventing and serving. For that, the quick start tutorials are perfectly fine. So we'll do a kubectl get pods hyphen n k native serving. So you can see all the pods are already there. Now let's see how we can create the service. So there are two ways to create the service. One is using uh, the KNCLI. So it can be used to create service, uh, revision, route, domain, container, all those things. And for the eventing, these are the commands. So everything can be uh, done using the um, knative command line. Or you can use the regular YAML files. So first, we'll, we'll do both. First, we'll use the uh, regular YAML file. So this is a very simple service. So we just say that the name of the service is demo. Uh, the revision of the service is um, v1. And uh, the container I want to use is this. And this is the port for the container. That's pretty much it. That's what I need to send and write. That's all. So let's apply kubectl apply hyphen f or create whatever you want to do. Revision one. It has created all the other things with the service like kubectl get routes, kubectl get configuration. So you can see everything is created and everything is ready. So for the route that it has created, uh, it has given it a, already a domain name. It has given it a auto TLS HTTPS because while installing, I have done those stuff. And now let's go to this. So welcome to CNCF minutes, uh, Knative. And the best YouTube channel is IEM91. So it worked perfectly, right? I didn't do anything. It created the deployment. It created the service. It created all that fancy stuff for me and gave me the URL. That's it. That's what that's what I want. Uh, now, if I want to create a revision and try traffic splitting, let's do that. So if I see now, I can actually uh, apply this, uh, which is another particular image. You will see the change when you see it. And the traffic I want to the latest revision, 50% uh, and to the revision V1 uh, also 50%. So let's apply that, kubectl apply hyphen F. It's done, uh, the name remains the same. You can do the tagging and for the advanced use cases. So let's refresh. And now I get 50% of the times the old revision 50% of the times, the new revision. I can also do gradual rollouts and stuff like that. So I've also uh, deployed the hello world YAML file and you can see that it is uh, right now scaled to zero. Uh, and as soon as I hit the hello world URL, it will start the container creating and it will be running. So that's how cool uh, it is. And uh, if you see kubectl get pods, you can see that the demo v1 and demo v2 are terminating uh, because we are not sending any traffic over there and it is automatically scaling down to zero. If you see the get deploy, you can see that both of the revisions have zero pods. So let's move to the events demo. Uh, so for the events demo, we'll be creating a service. So it's a simple Knative service using the Knative CLI. 
So it says like create a service called Cloud Events Player with the image uh, Cloud Events Player latest and the broker URL. And it has created and it is ready to serve the traffic on this particular URL. Now next is to create the trigger. So we'll be creating a trigger with the broker uh, example broker. I already have the broker and I already have the broker layer and uh, the, even the channel layer as part of the installation that I did for uh, Kennedy eventing. So let's look at kubectl get trigger, kubectl get route. So you can see everything is ready, everything is true. Uh, so let's hit the service. Uh, so this is like event ID, event type, event source based on the structuring of the cloud events. So following the similar pattern. So let's give it. Uh, random ID demo event sources demo send the event so you can see like uh, the the event has sent and since we gave the sync of the trigger as the same cloud player event so you can see that it has already received as well here so you can see it is received it is sent it is received and you can see the message that is sent and the message that is received so that was a very simple example uh, now for all the things that I have explained, there are deep type videos which are there on my channel for the K Native series by the experts. So make sure you check that out. I'll put the link in the description. So this video is brought to you by um, all the members, uh, Sysdig, which is driving the standard for cloud native and container security. The company has pioneered cloud native runtime threat detection and response by creating Falco and Sysdig as open source standards and key building blocks of the platform. Armo. Uh, Armo assure DevOps, DevSecOps, and developers that every workload, cluster, container, and microservice is born and remains secure from development to production and from configuration to runtime every time. They are the creators of Cubescape. Avobital, uh, making the cloud native WebAssembly easy. Uh, they are the creators of Atmo and SAT. Check their recent uh, great announcements. Robusta, an open source platform for Kubernetes troubleshooting and automation. Uh, it makes your incident response and troubleshooting uh, very simple. Cloud Casa uh, is a free Kubernetes uh, backup and cloud migration with cyber resilience as a service. Teleport, uh, which is the easiest, most secure way to access all your infrastructure. The open source Teleport X plane consolidates connectivity, authentication, authorization, and audit into a single platform. And Slim AI that gives developers the power to build better cloud native application with less friction, complexity, and waste. So that's it for Knative uh, CNCF Minutes. Um, I hope you liked the video, you enjoyed the video, you got a gist of what Knative eventing and Knative service is. If you happen to try it out, make sure you tag me and tell me what exactly you try it out. Uh, so that's it for this particular video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like, then make sure you like the video, comment and subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Thank you and see you next time.